Well, hello everybody. Today we are making a Bakewell tart, a traditional English tart, um, an almond type tart. I have, um, back in my uh, videos here, cooking videos, there is a tart that I made, and I have made several times, uh, called uh, Tarta de Santiago. It's a Galician Spanish tart from uh, northeastern Spain. I think so. I'm horrible with directions. Um, it's famous along the Camino of northern Spain, and I've made it numerous times to take to different uh, functions, especially ones that were about the Camino. This reminds me of it quite a bit. There are several things that are different about it, and I haven't tasted this yet to compare it, but I'm going to right now. For one thing, the Galician Tarte de Santiago does not have jam on the bottom. It is very good, and it does have some similarities. The instructions that came with it, the recipe, said either to serve it with heavy cream, which is what I'm adding now, or a uh, custard sauce. I didn't bother to make a custard sauce, so we'll have another little bite here with some heavy cream on it. It's very good, and it does, as I've said, have some similarities to the, the Spanish Tarta de Santiago, but with the addition of uh, raspberry jam on the bottom, and I think it probably has more eggs in it than the Spanish one has. What follows here is the making of the Bakewell Tart, so I hope you'll watch it, and uh, if it interests you, give it a try. Let's make that tart. As I think I already said, Bakewell tart is uh, a very traditional English recipe, English dessert, many versions of it. This particular one claims to be the traditional, but <laughs> I think that depends on your tradition. Um, and not that difficult to make. Let's get the equipment assembled here. I'm starting with 200 grams of flour, and that is two and a quarter cups if you're doing in dry measures. Uh, and I'm using half and half, half uh, pastry flour, I guess you can see the bag for my pastry flour back there, and the other 100 grams is just all-purpose flour. Um, according to the recipe, that will give you a lighter, crispy crust, so hopefully that works. And to that, you add a pinch of salt, just a few shakes of salt there, and that's a, it's a sea salt, but it's iodized. And a quarter of a pound, four ounces, which is 115 grams of unsalted, well-chilled butter, done into little cubes here. That's one stick if you're buying butter in, in the package that has the four sticks. And that gets pulped. Until the butter is in quite small pieces. Still some fairly large ones. I'll pulse it a few more times. I think that will do. And to that you add two to three tablespoons of ice water. I know one won't be enough, so I'll add two and see what I think of it after that. third tablespoon of ice water. Now I'll turn
turn this out and refrigerate it for at least a half hour. The bleed. Try tipping this out without making too much of a mess. That will get refrigerated for a half hour. While the pastry is cooling in the refrigerator, I'll grease and prepare a tart pan, a removable bottom tart pan. I was going to go with the rectangular one. I like the shape better, but the recipe specifies that it should be a deep tart pan. So we will go with this one. Just going to paint some uh, butter on. To Hopefully keep it from sticking and it will release better. Anyway, I'll bring you back when it's time to roll out the pastry. This has been thoroughly chilled on a lightly floured surface now with a little flour on top. Try to roll this out into a circle large enough to uh, line the tart pan. that's close enough. Too bad, I guess. Seems to be enough. Doesn't want to cooperate with being cut down that way. fills the pan. I'll push some of the little bits into the fluted side here. There. Now you dock this with a fork making some light impressions in the bottom of the crust. Helps to keep it from puffing up when you bake it. This is going to be blind baked. I'll show you that process shortly. 
right now it goes in the refrigerator for 15 minutes. The pastry has been cooling for 15 minutes and now it will be blind baked in a 325 degree preheated oven. Rid of some of the extra pastry there. I'm using a Martha Stewart trick here. If you're going to cover the uh, pie shell with parchment paper in order to add pie weights for the oven, she says to ball up a piece of parchment paper first and it will fit down in the pan much quicker. And as is usual, Martha is right. Uh, I'm using beans as spy weights. You can use them hundreds of times. You can't bake with them or use them in cooking. Once you've done this, you've destroyed a pound of beans. But cheaper than buying those, whatever, aluminum, and I guess I've seen some ceramic pie weights. 15 minutes and my preheated 325 degree oven. Well, the tart has had 15 minutes in the 325 degree oven. And now, remove the pie beans. I won't press my lock, I'll put those back in the bottle later. At this point, the pie tart shell gets painted with just a, an egg white that's been whipped up a little just to break it up so that it'll paint on easier. I think the reason behind this is once it goes back in the oven and bakes the uh, egg white onto the surface it sort of makes the tart shell waterproof so that it doesn't it doesn't get uh, soggy when you add the filling. There we are. It goes back in the 325 degree oven without any topping, any uh, pie beans or anything on top for five minutes. Well, it's had its 15 minutes plus five minutes after you put on the egg white. And now you spread two tablespoons or approximately two tablespoons of a good quality raspberry jam over the bottom of the of the shell here. I say approximately. I think it would depend on the size of your pastry shell here as to how much you would need. And this is a commercially made raspberry jam. I didn't have any of my own. And this offset spatula is too large, which I thought it would be. I'm going to switch over to my brush. Once the uh, raspberry jam is distributed all over the bottom of the tart, it then gets set aside to completely cool. And while it's cooling, we'll make the filling. That was just a little bit over two, two tablespoons, and it covered the bottom nicely. Plus, I got some stuff left on the brush there. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you were able to see that. Now we'll start making the filling. I think I have everything ready to make the filling. Uh, first you cream together the butter and the sugar. And this is 150 grams of butter, or 5 ounces, at room temperature hopefully, because it'll cream better that way. And it says a fine sugar. I'm just using ordinary white sugar here. 55 grams, or a quarter of a cup, of sugar. that go until it's light and creamy and then I'll bring you back. Well, I guess you can see that that's light and creamy and now you add three medium sized eggs plus one egg yolk and they've been lightly beaten together and you add it gradually a bit at a time. I 
we'll scrape that down and let it beat a little bit after. I wasn't happy with how it was coming together, so I switched to the wire balloon whisk here for a few minutes and got a much smoother batter out of it. Now it comes off the stand mixer to do some hand folding in with the rest of the ingredients. Now you fold in one and three quarters cups, 150 grams of ground almonds. of the almonds and the zest of a medium-sized lemon. And that in theory, let's say you get it combined here, is ready to go in the pastry shell. No flour or anything like that at all, just the, the ground almonds are thickening it up nicely, I guess. Well, we'll get the pastry shell here. The pastry shell is thoroughly cooled. Try to spread this evenly over the bottom of the shell. waste any of it. I'm surprised at the consistency. I've never made one before. Now that goes in the 325 degree oven for 20 minutes. I'll see you in 20 minutes time. It's been in for 20 minutes. And now it says two tablespoons of slivered almonds, flaked almonds. Well, I didn't measure. I'm just going to put some flaked almonds on the top here, I guess. They should stick to the surface now. They would have stuck to the surface before, but this bakes for a total of at least 40 minutes and maybe longer if it isn't quite set. And uh, if you'd have put them on in the beginning, they would have been crispy critters by the time it was finished. Well, that goes back in the oven for another 20 minutes at 325 degrees. Well, I let it go for an extra 5 minutes, so it was in there 25 minutes instead of 20. But I'm going to call that done and let it cool down quite a bit before I take it out of the tart pan and put it on a platter. Well, there's the finished product. It wasn't at all difficult to get it out of the tart pan. It came away quite nicely. I leave it on the base, uh, the metal base underneath of it. I find it much easier to, to slice one of these things if you leave, the, leave it on the metal. Well, that is it finished. I hope you'll give it a try. It looks pretty good, I think.